as a general as a general thing you can kind of feel the palpable moment of tension has just passed like Mm. like did you feel it overnight like like that or oh, maybe this isn't the dip. Maybe it's got one more leg down, and then that that moment of tension that was like that maximum moment of tension was was it? Really? Yeah. I mean, there was there was there was a moment during this last you know week or maybe two weeks or so where I was like, maybe I'll come out of a position a little. Maybe I'll. And then I was like, go for a walkie and stop thinking about it. Hold and like you say, it's that. I, I think it's important to to calibrate that kind of emotion how were you feeling over the last week i didn't feel great i felt under physically a lot of stress i felt physically under a lot of pressure i felt like before i felt like okay this is all like written in stone we're on like 100 percent. fucking let's go chips into the middle of the table the last week i was like oh i don't know about that mm. and, and that's actually what you want to feel that's it, the times, if you think about the times that we've got maximum fucked in the years that we've been doing this, they've all been from a from a, a position of great confidence that we know the future. Oh, yeah, yeah. I cannot lose. Pick anything. I'll How close me up and pick. I'm the smartest okay. guy in the world. Fucking not so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's just the... Uh, so this is just the nature of things. So I'm... Um, do you want to do you want to give a bit of a market update first or do you want me to jump into it what do you want to do well i think if if you jump into it and we'll do that trade log so we're up to speed with everything we've got on let's do a little bit of uh let's do a bit of uh um market update and then let's go through the trade log i think that's the most impactful thing we can do for each other today okay so let's start with bitcoin now if we ignore if we just walk this through bar by bar, very confident, but dip buyers are stepping in. You can tell dip buyers are stepping in because they've bought it all the way back up from a low of here into there. This tells us that buyers are still horny for what they've got. This bar kind of changes everything because the dip buyers should have been enough to start a new leg up. This is our canary in the coal mine that we're probably going to go down a bit more. There's still buyers. This looked like a bottom. This looks like a bottom to me. But that was not a bottom. We didn't have enough buyers even to push it up over the, the over the high of the previous day. We have an expanded range. We have a bar that opens at the highs. It closes near the lows, meaning the sellers controlled the open and the sellers controlled the close and there was very little profit taking at the close. Buyers here expected further downside. We have a total reversal. When you see a complete reversal of what is objectively, this is really the moment of maximum bearishness, right? We have a complete reversal of that maximum bearishness and we close above where it started. So we just wiped it all out. This is the moment when danger has passed, but we need to retest the lows before we're safe. And what do I mean by that? We need to have a real attempt at making a new leg down that fails. So now we have day one, we have day two. At this point, the market can do one of two things. If the, if the sellers are all gone, there will be no sellers left and it has to go up. Like a beach ball that you push under the water that you let go, it just springs up. If there's still sellers, the sellers are going to push it down. You can see how many sellers do we have. We've got some buyers stepping in to counterbalance those sellers. And we're soaking some sellers out. Every time it goes out, up, we sell some out. And then you can see overnight what happened. This was Sunday. We have an inside bar. An inside bar is a bar with a lower high and a higher low than the previous bar. Basically, it's been all day doing fucking nothing. Ended up almost exactly where it started. Started here, went up, went down, finished right where it started. So at this stage, you can treat this like a war of attrition between buyers and sellers. One side or the other side is going to win. And instead of predicting it, it's really much easier to just, you know, say, okay, if it gets above here, buyers are going to win. If it gets below here, sellers are going to win. And then we see what happens. 
Okay. We had no selling pressure at all, like not even enough to get it down below here. That tells us with a with you know with a reasonable high degree of certainty that these last three days have soaked out all of the sellers. There's no sellers left. There's only buyers. This is a very, very, very high probability of racing, first of all, to here. What happens if we get to about... What happens if we get to within spitting distance? If we if we edge up to about here, no one's going to sell here. Why? Because they're pretty sure they're going to get sold for here. So we're going to get a vacuuming effect. If we get past this up here, all the guys who puked out of their positions here are going to be forced to buy back in up here. And this fuels a new leg. So you can see this has happened previous times. The guys who sold here were forced to buy back in here and that fueled a new leg. The guys who forced to sell here were forced to buy back in here and that fueled a new leg up. This is the way it works. So this is what we can expect to see, and we'll see it in the altcoin market as well. You can see it really clearly. We've got exactly the same pattern. Altcoins have clearly broken out. We're looking for altcoins to lead the way here. Now, the real question is, should you be in Bitcoin, should you be in alts? And if you're in alts, what alts should you be in? So let's take a look. So it's so the lows were somewhere around here. A vertical line on that shit. That's close enough. And let's see what's happened since then. Minutes. See it a bit better. So you can see Doge is a standout off the lows. Gal previously strong, also looking strong. Rune, we, we've been in for a couple of days. Um, Nia. Lever is pretty strong. We're seeing a, a little bit of rotation out of INJ, Render, and TR, and TRX, which has previously been strong. So that gives us kind of a, a little hint. First of all, there's no there's no one sector that's obvious. It's not like all memes, all gaming, all this, all that. Um, we're seeing a broad base rally. That I think that's important. Now let's go through some of these. Um, let me let's get through. What do we got here? Okay, woo. Very happy to hold this in the long term. If you are a long term, if you're a long term holder, I think this is a, a phenomenal long term hold of a coin, and I think it's going five bucks and up in the course of the full year. Um, you can see we have a completed buy setup, lowest low in 10 bars, higher close, lower close. Find a better chart. Yeah, I think this is I, I think this is gonna go for a start immediately to a buck eighty and then um And then up towards five dollars ish. So we're very happy to keep. Well, where are we? Roll Bitcoin. Not happy with this pitch. Yeah, I think we got to sell this one. This one's been an underperformer. Hmm. 
Femex token, happy to still hold this one. I think this one was always a long-term hold. And it's doing quite well. We bought it like like way back here. Um, bought it for sixty seven. It's ninety two. It's going up. There's no reason to there's no reason to sell something that's winning. Um, Ninja, this bucket of shit. The chart looks really kind of good from time to time. So The thing that bothers me about this coin is the low liquidity on it. This would be very hard to get out of in size. Um, Here we go. Okay, so we bought it here. It's around where we bought it for. Um, I think this one either works or it doesn't. Like, uh, it's an INJ. It's an INJ mean coin. INJ is a little bit in the shitter at the moment, and we've been through a market downturn. It's not really reasonable to expect that to to be the same. Um, INJ looks okay. That looks okay. I, I'd hold that one. I am holding that one. Um, where are we doing a sell are... alert for our LB? Sorry, for our LB, should we do a sell alert? Is I know that was a yeah, corny think... digital, yeah. I think we should. I sold out, I sold it okay. out of that a while ago. I think I, I told people we didn't get out. I'll get that as, uh, as you're going through them, mate. Okay, so this one, this bucket of shit, um, this probably isn't gonna work, but. It's showing signs of life. I wouldn't sell that just because it's down so bad from 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 where we're in. Like we bought in, we bought in on spec here just in case it went it went nuts. It was like nineteen hundred or something, you know. I would hold that just in case this whole meme sector catches fire. Um, I wouldn't expect that one to work. I wouldn't get into it if you're not into it. But I also wouldn't sell out of it now. Um. So let's look at ETH BTC. This is a bet on whether or not Ethereum will outperform Bitcoin currently. If we get an alt season, and it looks like alt season, that should that should very rapidly change. So I'm happy holding I'm happy holding ETH BTC. What else have we got here? Oh, Pendle. Pendle looks great, by the way. Here we go. This is a perfect coin. You could buy this today. You could buy this yesterday. You could have bought it when we told you to buy it. It was a great hold then. It's a great hold now. It's at all-time highs. It's really, really strong. Um It's like super strong, right? Um, great coin to hold. What else have we got? BSV, we've got to get out of this one. This one is a small loss. Got in at the red line. Here we are here. Took some heat. I think if we get an alt season, this one might. It, like this whole BSV ecosystem is imploding, but I wouldn't. But an alt season could still make it go up. So I, I don't think we've got an edge there. So let's close that one. Um, Solana. I mean, that's beautiful. There's absolutely no reason to sell anything like, like this, right? And what we're hoping is that this gives our stupid Solana meme coins like Retardio um, uh, uh, a kick in the ass. Because when these go up, when Solana goes up, the meme coins go up. So that's what we're hoping for here. Um, Nia, also looking magnificent. Perfect. Super strong, right up the top, 
right up the top of coins, like number four. Perfect. Don't sell that. Um, Ondo, also great. And Sui, also great. Couldn't get a better chart. Like, just couldn't get a better chart. Sui, also great. This one looks like it's really going to rip into price discovery. Uh, it's been a little bit of a, you know, forgotten, overlooked middle child, and, and it looks like ready to have its moment in the sun to me. Yeah, INJ still looks good, and IMX. Let's have a look at So INJ is a little bit behind just because it's, you know, doing its thing around here. This one is going to be fine. Um, a long sideways period. The longer the sideways period, the, the faster the up period when it eventually goes. IMX also looks great. Phenomenal chart. Finished its basing pattern. Ready to rock. Shaking out a bunch of sellers. Ideal. Um, CFX looks fantastic. You can see today we're in this, we've been banking on it going vertical and it is indeed starting to go vertical. And you, you can see starting to ping off previous things. So this one's into price discovery, um, showing a very, very big profit. Just hold that one. Um, that's some pretty fucking good, good trades. Um, PHB and BNB. Probably should have sold some up here, but this is definitely bottomed, um, ready for the price discovery again. Good chart, strong, no reason to sell. BNB, same thing, completed bottom, no reason to sell. Um, kudos and Vertex. Didn't we sell Vertex? I think we did sell Vertex. Yeah, we closed that one. Okay, so I'm glad we closed that one. Um, where do we close it here? Um, and kudos. Wow, that looks great. I would totally buy buy more of that today. I still issue a second uh, sell alert for that kudos. Second buy alert. Yeah, yeah. I'd buy that. I'd buy that right yeah. now. Let's do that. Um. What do we got? Weaver. Oh, shit, yeah. Some pretty fucking good coins we hold here, man. Um, This one's ready to bank again. Um, You know, after making all-time highs, after making, sorry, sorry, year highs. This is a heavily manipulated coin, obviously, right? So how do we know it's a manipulated coin? Because every time it goes up, it dumps super hard. Every time it goes up, it dumps super hard. If we get one more go up, we can assume that that's going to be in play as a manipulation. We want to keep a close eye on this for dumps. Um, we want to be a bit aggressive in banking profits after the previous fuckery that we've had here and here. Uh, we had some. We had a really good exit here, um, and we've had and we've got good profit. Um, it's time to be a bit careful with that one. Um, Phil and Silo. Phil looks great. Um, looks like every other chart, right? I, I mean, okay, this God candle was the warning that, that we're probably going to go sideways for a while. This one's probably going to go up again, but I would not expect this to be as, as clean shot. I wouldn't buy this today, but I would but I would continue to hold it. Um, it's been performing well. It's got a lot of price discovery behind it and ahead of it. Totally fine. Ape, Darwinia, Retardio, and Mia. Fine, strong today. Um, yeah, that meme sector, Doge is strong, so this is probably going to get a lift. Mines of Darwinia, USDT gaming, uh, a Web3 gaming thing. Strong chart, stronger than the other things we've looked at today. Um, hold. Um, Retardio.
Okay, so we have the completed retest at the lows. Um, this one looks ready to go again. Um, none of these meme coins, the whole meme coin sector is not going to get a boost until we get like super frothy again. So this is probably not going to happen in the next week or the next two weeks. So you guys are in memes, I'm in memes. Um, don't expect memes to just like bam, be be super reliable. Meme, meme coins need like speculative mania to go up. And we don't have that. People are still a bit scared and a bit spooked. So we're not going to see like significant price appreciation. I still think this one's good for over uh, over 10 cents. Um, I'm very happy with this position. Um, let's look at the others while we're here. Um, Mia looks like shit, but this Blast Network is getting so much press at the moment. Um, there's a bunch of influencers promoting Blast. <clears throat> I'm not comfortable with this, um, but I think there's. I, I think the upside outweighs the downside here. Um, up dog is a complete dog. I don't think that one's going to work, but I also don't think it's worth selling it. Like for the small positions we had, um, at a market cap of this, it could easily go again if we get another. If we get another speculative mania, so I wouldn't bother selling this. I would just. I would just keep it. Um, and all of these meme coin bets should be like that. They should be like. You know, no more than a thousand or two thousand dollars. And as soon as you start making profits, you should bank your original money and and pull out aggressively along the way. These shouldn't be things that you hold for hundred x because they reverse just as fast as they go up, right? Um, let's move on. Rune. All right. Looks beautiful. Like. Absolutely beautiful, fresh out to new highs, reasonable pullback to the old highs, found support. Looks like every other chart that we've got here. Mm -hmm. um, honestly, guys, it doesn't really matter what you hold at, at this stage. Like, I can almost guarantee that as the market goes up, everything's going to go up or everything's going to go down. Um, you've got to decide where do you want to be on the scale of risky versus not risky. On the scale of least risky, things like Solana, um, uh, things like Solana and Ethereum. On the scale of most risky, obviously the meme coins. And what what I think is the sweet spot is somewhere in the middle right now. I um, I would be basing the bulk of your portfolios around things like Pendle, like Near, like Ondo, like uh, like. Dewey, like SEI, like um, INJ, Woo, Phil, those sort of medium caps, I think is is going to be the sweet spot for the next week or two. What are your thoughts, Ian? Um, <laughs> well, they are kind of aligned with yours. I mean, the way that you've gone through this market, I don't have uh, an opposing... Uh, view to this i mean to quote you it's that it seems like what is it the same turd wrapped in a different glitter situation yeah. going on that's you know, it, so all the charts like, look the same they do yeah yeah so i think i think last week you said that if you hold 10 positions that gives you the benefit that gives you 80 percent of the benefit of say holding 20 or 30 or 40 positions so i think that's another interesting and, marker for people okay so let's talk a little bit about that so let's talk about what happens as you go from 10 positions down to five positions as you concentrate what happens is let's say you catch an absolute balls out winner on one of those five you probably triple your portfolio from that one out by a win if you have that same win but you're holding 10 it's a nice win, but it's not a game changer. So where we're, where you're at is is there's two factors here. One is actually I'm hold up my finger. The Zoom doesn't like that. One is your span of control. How many positions can you reasonably monitor? And two is how much luck do you want to take? If you want if you if you want to, if you want more chance of hitting the jackpot, you have to have fewer coins. If you want to maximize your chances of doing very well, you'll have more coins. Mm. It should never be just one, by the way. There's no there's no mathematical excuse for anyone saying, like, I put all my 
chips into XRP. I bet on zero. Yeah. Because <laughs> we've all done that at some time before, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah. As we come through and, these and that, cycles. Nothing, nothing but pain comes from that, I would say. Mm. Absolutely. I think I got about 13 or 14 open positions at the moment. I get something like, like that. Yeah, that's yeah, it. Plus some shitters. Plus some. Oh, yeah, yeah. The thing with those shitters is, uh, I think you said this the other week, is take profits when we get to the highs. Don't hold thinking that the whole fucking world's going to wake up and be like, you know what? Let's fuck it. Let's give up on money and just go with crypto because it's not going to happen. So keep well, taking it, profit. It could happen, but it's unlikely to happen. And, you know, you, you just want to bet on the things that are likely to happen, you know? It's like we we don't want to be betting on unlikely things. Um, you know, we know that we know that meme coins can take off, and we know that when they take off, they can take off really hard. It's 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 definitely sensible to have a small proportion of your portfolio in meme coin bets, but they are straight bets. They're not investments. Oh yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah. That's why um, I only have such a a small, a much smaller position in those. I don't like to use the word fun with trading, but that's kind of how I look at those main coins. A smaller position, if they moon, awesome, thank you. If they don't, well, I was probably expecting that more than I was expecting the moon. Exactly, sir. Um, any, anything you want me to go over? Like, it's your time, guys. The replays are in the 100X group, there for uh, the members only. Other replays Scott does send out uh, via email. That's usually the Friday call uh, that goes out. So uh, some people are asking about FinRev, Scott, if you wanted to sure. dive into that. Let's have a look. One sec. Let me just my account. Let's see how it goes today. I haven't checked it today. Mm -hmm. I, the, the big advantage... Um, Yeah. The big advantage of FinRev is you don't have to check it every day. So what has it done? Done nothing. Twenty-four flat for three days. Let's have a look at its positions. Uh, it's got some shorts and some longs. Let's look at the portfolio. So how many shorts have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine shorts and about fifty longs. Bitcoin dominance, Aptos, BNB, TRX, FTM. Gosh. These are coins I wouldn't have picked. Um, what's it doing today? Should be adding a little bit more. So today, what are we selling? A little bit of Bitcoin. Buying, a, you know, buying 50 bucks worth of XRP, buying... 20 bucks worth of EOS. It's it's nothing. It's just playing around the edges, right? Um, buying 400 bucks worth of OP. Playing around the edges. Yeah, so this is just normal. This is a great time to uh, to add more funds to, to FinRev. This is exactly what I'm doing now, um, adding more funds. I like to add funds on pullbacks. Um, I prefer to add funds on pullbacks than at all-time highs. Um, is, is generally what I, I say. And we can expect these sideways periods to be 19 to 31 days. And we're at 13 March, add 19 to 31 days to the 13th of March. And what's that? Pretty soon in next week? Uh, start of April, something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's pretty predictable. Like generally, as soon as it makes new highs, we see another run up. With some big, and the more wiggles that you see along the way, the more money you're going to make in the future. It's generally um, volatility in trend following is highly correlated with increased future returns. So when it, so when we see a lack of volatility in returns as in it goes sideways, that predicts future crappy returns. When we see a lot of wiggling up and down, that predicts a lot of future returns. That's there's a bunch of maths behind that too. Um, let's have a look at some individual coins. Let's see how they're going.
All right. Bitcoin back at a 7.4. A 10 is a normal size bias. So we're, you know, three quarters of a position. Let's look at Ethereum. Seven point five, same basic deal. AVAX a bit worse. Forgotten middle child there. Um, Doge, interesting. Fifteen. Doge is probably one of our strongest coins here. Um, Doge looks great. Doge looks legitimately great. Doge is um, great, and it. It's it's a money maker. I mean, it, it might be attached to Elon. It might be an utter nonsense and everything like that. But it makes money year on year. Been around year. forever, dude. It's been around. Yeah. Um, Phil, not so much. I think Phil's going to go again. Um, yeah. 9.2, just normal size position. I mean, this is all like steady as she goes. You can see like, like once things start to accelerate up, we're seeing, you know, we're gonna we're seeing it, we're seeing it uptick. So um as price accelerates, um, we're gonna increase our positions pretty rapidly. Um I'm pretty happy with uh yeah, pretty happy with performance actually. Um, yeah, anything else I can show you guys? Polkadot. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm reading the chat now. Four point five. A little bit weak, but but probably looks good. HMT. Haven't got any data for that, but let's have a quick look at HMT. It's one that I've been meaning to follow. That's a pretty decent looking chart. I mean, let's add this here. AOS. Everyone loves this coin. That is absolutely going to bang right now. Um, uh, John W., I'm not answering emails at the moment. In fact, I'm going to be basically taking a month off doing very minimal, just like just my minimal uh, commitments here, so there's there's no way to get in touch with me at the moment. I won't be answering Twitter, Facebook, emails, anything for a month. So so uh, uh, the rest of the guys will help you. Um, Ian, I think we should consider a buy setup here. This one really looks like it's going to bang right now. Mm. Should we do that? I reckon we should. I'm just my fingers are in the background now, trying to get things ready. It looks very exciting. That looks like a. Let's let's have a quick look at the Velo data. That's a uh, that's the nicest looking chart that we saw today. Whoever posted IOS, that's definitely the best chart we saw today. Hey, buddy, how you doing? I know. Oh no, spot only. Um. Okay. Um, so we don't have futures on it, which is kind of okay. Um, yeah, I think we've. I, I, I think we've got to uh, put a buy alert on this. I think we should be buying it. Okay. Yeah, I think we should spot buy it. Um, XTZ. There's a name I haven't heard for a while. It says us. Looks okay. Everything's going up right now. Um, Perry, no, I'm going to, I'm like pushing past like work-related burnout and I made a trading mistake last, I made a trading mistake at the start of the month and that is really unlike me. And if we're going to, if we're going to preserve my peak performance for the, for the whole of the bull market, I'm going to have to start to be 
super diligent about winding winding my commitments down and taking enough rest and eating properly and all that stuff because if if I burn out and if I start making mistakes, we all got big fucking problems. Um, Yes, Seth, volatility is a double-edged sword. So you might think that it's as simple as high volatility makes more money, but it's actually not that simple. Um, Ian has a, uh, uh, a detailed video on it where we go into the maths. Um, can you post that for them, the choosing a volatility target? Grabbing that name. You know, Ian will be able to find that. But uh, in general, using a high volatility target works better when the system's performing really well, and it works worse when the system's performing really badly. Um, that's the short version. The uh, the long version is that taking more risk is risky. Um, how do you suggest, Eric, how do you suggest we diversify without hoarding lots of coins? Um, between five and 10, but between five and 10 plus a few like gambling plays, um, up to 15, beyond 20, it, it's unmanageable. Um, Arkham. Looks great. Everything looks great. Okay. How do you choose? Right now, if I'm choosing for the next, it depends. Am I choosing for the whole bull market? Am I choosing for the next month? If I'm choosing for the next month or so, what am I going to want to be in? I'm going to want to be in a core of medium, a core of of, of medium sized coins. So if I'm in for the next month, just going through my list of what I would hold right now, I would hold Pendle, I would hold some IMX, I would hold some SEI, I would hold. Some Sui, I would hold some Ondo, I would hold some Rune. Um, for the next month, that would probably be a reasonably conservative play. Um, as we get later in the cycle, those coins that are going to be the, the, the solid early performers will get overtaken by more risky coins. So the danger is that people want to get like the massive riskiest coins now and the other coins are going to take away without take off without. That's the that's the danger for you guys. RMV. Never heard of it, but let's have a look. New coin, good chart, not much selling off the thing, looks good. Um, same thing here, exchange listing, wiped out a few people, looks ready to go. That looks fine. Gala looks quite Fine too. I'm a bit concerned about this candle, but it looks like it's recovered. And let's look at Gal while we're here. I, I mean, this is this is a standout. We've 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 almost got to have a position in this here. Sorry, let me just. Uh, I'm squiggling screens. Right here we are. Gal. Okay. What do you think? Well, I mean, that looks like a rocket ship, doesn't it? Sure does. I'm a bit late to this one. But fuck it. Mm. I think we got to get there... some. So this is always the question: Is there any reason on the screen that we should wait for a pullback, or is this one of these? This is ahead of the pack. Let's jump on it. You can see that the pullbacks are getting progressively smaller and less. They're not even breaking the daily lows. I don't think we're going to get a pullback here. Mm. Don't I think we got to go for it? I think so. Yep, um, Adam, that. I won't do a fib on it because that shit doesn't work. So I went to shit that doesn't work. Um, there's no magic lines that you can project onto a chart that are going to tell you what the future is. Like you just got to grow up about that stuff. Like that's just fairy tales. Um, there's no right. magic numbers that predict what the market is going to be because there's like a million things that can go wrong with it and a million things that can go right, and none of them are set in stone at this at, at this at this juncture. So Jay Powell could open his big mouth and say, we're raising rates and all this shit would be down 30% tomorrow 
like so any of this like let's just come up with some numbers that tell us where it's going to be and this specific date and time that's all code um badger let's have a look okay just confirming scott gonna do a uh, buy alert for gal right now there we go um phenomenal chart clear breakout FOMO, no one sold here. This is a rocket ship, guys. I don't like buying when we've missed it by so much, but this uh, if you're on this one, this one's a rocket ship. Um, could even be worth having a small position. I won't put a buy alert on it just because it's bad practice to buy something when we should have bought it here. Um, but this is, that's outstanding, um, Christina. It's really, really impressive chart. Um, Todd Main, what do you think about getting into so-called next thousand X coins? I think now is not the time for it. I think what we're probably going to see is right now people are still a bit nervy and scared, right? We just we're just taking a few punches in the face. I don't think the appetite to to find the next thousand X is going to be there this week or next week or the week after. I think people are going to dip their toes back in the water on things that they know, they've heard about, that they're comfortable with. And they're going to gradually go out from the Bitcoins, the Ethereums, the Solanas, into the Ondos and Pendles and Sueys. And then from there out to the, to, to the, the you know, the AOSs and things like that. And I think it's a long stretch to start looking at micro caps right now. Um, Daniel, good point. Yeah. Um, FinRev is, FinRev is really good. Um, FinRev will never and can never 100x your account. You can do that if you get a if you get the right coin and and the 10x's or 100x's, you can get lucky. So uh, Finrev has less luck. Less luck can be both a blessing and a curse. Um, John, I'm not letting anyone adjust their volatility target on the fly because there's just a hundred percent chance you're going to fuck that up. You're going to want it. You're going to turn it up. You're going to turn the volume up to maximum right in time to get fucked. And you're going to turn it down right in time to get to miss out on all your gains. It's just a guaranteed recipe for disaster, man. No one's doing that. Aero. Never heard of it. Let's have a look. Great looking chart. I don't even know what it is, but that is a great looking chart. Yeah, John, 50% vol target in FinRev is, is, in my view, about right for right now. You know, right now, you could probably push it a bit higher, but you won't always be able to push it a bit higher. That looks amazing. That looks that looks amazing. I'm not sure what you mean, Adam. Um, I've always kind of liked the 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 base ecosystem. Um, anything else, guys? Um, no, don't do any pre-sales, Jeff. That that pre-sale narrative, that's like, that's a, a good way to get fucked, dude. Like you're trusting some shady guy. Most of them don't have any technical skills. It's all just bullshit. Um, Stephen, I, I tend to agree with you. I think base could be the next area to run. Sol looks great. Link looks great. Bitcoin Cash, just treat Bitcoin Cash like Bitcoin on steroids. Um, I'm concerned about this candle, um, but it looks fine. Um, Retardios is okay. Um, do you like a, Trevor, do you like a 5X leverage trade on Sui and Phil? I don't think we have the market conditions for a 5X leverage trade. Uh, if you have 5X leverage, a 20% dip is going to take you out and we can and have had 20% single-day dips. So I would think 2x leverage is maximum here. Um, 
Mm. Bane looks really good. Phenomenal looking shot. Steady marches up, every dip is bought, not going nuts, just like quiet achiever, great. Storage, probably not as strong as some of the others we've seen, but still not bad. Um, no reason to sell that. Fit looks great. Looks amazing, actually. Thoughts on XMR, Dinosaur Coin. It's not a very appealing chart, is it? It's like, it's just not. Um, and Monero has its own problems, like Monero power is crying, right? So that 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 is both a blessing and a curse. Um, Stax looks amazing, um, but it's heavily exposed to Bitcoin. Polix, never heard of it. Let's have a look. Looks fine. Look, we haven't seen a bad chart here today. I, I, and I think that's, I think that's the message that you should take away is that we haven't seen anything that looks like you wouldn't want to own it, right? Mm. Categorically, categorically, too, like right. there hasn't been. I, I think XMR was the only chart that I looked at and thought, "Yeah, that ain't it." That's the, that's like one out of. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, the, so you know, a way of a way of saying that is that that's what alt season is, right? Like everybody wins. Keep your hands off the steering wheel. Like, you know, if you're having trouble, if you're having trouble with uh, with managing all this, shove it in Finrev. Um, if you're not having trouble with it, if you're having fun, if you're if you're doing it fairly well, five to ten coins. Concentrate on the medium caps here. The Ondos, the Sueys, the Pendles, that that size of thing. Um, FAL, Woo, Woo, a broad spread. I don't think there's any particular way to predict that this one's going to be better than that one. But, you know, the size, of it, it's roughly the size. The, the Runes, the Ondos, the Pendles, the Sueys, the SEIs. The, um, I don't think it's a time to be heavily into tiny little shit coins that you haven't heard of, like your mate that told you this is going to be the next thousand X. I think that's probably a mistake. I think that I think the play is going for coins. Okay. Heidi has a really good question. Advise on reducing my leverage from five to two, please. Have a lot of red positions. This is very easy. That what you want to do is sell the good sell the the good ones and and keep the red ones because they owe you money. Do the opposite. You want to do the opposite. So as a general rule in trading, you can do, you should be doing the emotionally difficult thing. If you don't know what to do, like I don't know which ones to sell. Well, which ones, uh, which one is the emotionally hardest to sell? And you're going to find that the emotionally hardest to sell is the ones that show you a loss. So I would sell those first and you definitely want to get it down to two. Nice. Um, mid cap, I would call, you know, top hundred on coin market cap. Maybe a bit more than that, you know, stuff like that. You can just just Google Coin Gap Gecko Top 100 or Coin Market Cap Top 100, um, and you'll get a list of the top 100 and just go down the list. Um, YFI is a manipulated DWF Labs coin, Perry. It's uh, uh, what they do is they pump it and then they wait for people to forget that that it's a pumped coin, and then they and then when people have forgotten, they do it again, and then they do it again, and they've done it like three times. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's about it, right? Nice, nice. I think we are where we are right now, and it is, uh, well, I'm quietly excited. <laughs> yeah, go st just sit on your hands here. You know, be fully invested. Don't use leverage. Chill. Chill in the strong coins. This month is going to be very, very... It's going to be beautiful for you. Don't don't stress about a little thing. Don't don't get too cute. Don't go way out on the risk curve into this thing that you've never heard of. Just stick with the stick with the shit. That's you've got a high probability win in front of you. And I know some of you are going to want to take that high probability win in the hand 
and turn that into a low probability chance of a lottery ticket thing. Don't do that. You've got one. It's just a, a dead set layup right in front of you. Just hold them, hold the medium sized coins, the ones that are just a little bit behind, you know, Solana, Link, Ada, like the ones a little bit behind that. That's the play. Don't overcomplicate it. Awesome. Well, that's it. That's the line under it. All right. Thank you, it. Scott.